Confronting Benny at the Topps Casino is a pivotal moment in the story of Fallout New Vegas. From that moment, the story can branch in one of four directions. We've seen how the story ends if we side with Robert House, and if we side with Caesar's Legion. But now, it's time to see what happens if we side with the NCR. When we arrived on this trip, we were approached by a courier from the NCR who handed us Ambassador Crocker's note. In that note, Ambassador Crocker said that he has heard of our reputation, and he is willing to forgive any past crimes we've committed against the NCR if we check in with him at the NCR Embassy at the Strip to hear what he has to say. To find the Embassy, we head south down the Strip. Passing the Ultralux Casino, we find the Embassy to the left, across the road from Michelangelo's sign shop. Just outside by the fence, we find a plaque that reads, Embassy of the New California Republic, New Vegas. Ambassador Dennis Crocker, representing the citizens of the Republic at the request of Aaron Kimball, President of the Republic. Inside the fence, we find a brick courtyard where the NCR flag flies proudly. Here, we find two rather dilapidated buildings. To the north, we find the embassy in the shadow of the Ultralux, and to the south, we find the NCR military police headquarters. We'll start by exploring here first. Inside, we find an office filled with tables and filing cabinets. There's a terminal on the first desk we see, but even though it flickers, we can't access it. However, we do find a terminal we can access to the west. It's locked with an easy lock, and because it's owned, hacking it will cost us karma. But when we are sure no one's looking, we can hack into the terminal to see if we can learn a bit more about the NCR's activities here in New Vegas. First item, Strip Security Note. I've noticed an increase in the amount of smuggling of restricted items into the Strip. I'm increasing security at the checkpoints to prevent more of this. A report has been sent to Ambassador Crocker via Lisa to address this. Sadly, it's not signed. We don't know who wrote it. Presumably, the Chief of the Military Police. In the next one, Military Police Shift Reports. Shift Reports from the MPs. Two drunk troopers were causing a ruckus on the Strip. MPs got involved and were able to resolve the situation before Securitrons showed up. MPs received a complaint of suspicious activity near the Lucky 38. The complaint reported seeing a man hugging several trees. An intoxicated man was sleeping in the lobby of the Tops. A woman reported a drunk man vomiting in the fountain in front of the Ultralux. MPs were unable to find the man once arriving at the scene. MPs responded to a report of a young woman behind Las Vegas Station who locked herself in handcuffs. MPs broke up a fight between twin brothers near Gamora. The brothers stated they were fighting over one of the dancers at Camora. From this, we get the impression that the NCR military police does quite a lot of the everyday policing here on the Strip. I suppose we can presume that the Securitrons are really only there to intervene in the case of an invasion or some sort of violent gang conflict. But for everything else, House shoulders that responsibility onto the NCR. And in the last one, Trooper Behavior Report, Private Irwin has been causing trouble again. His pranks are starting to go a little too far. One more complaint, and I'll put him behind bars. Ooh, Private Irwin the prankster, eh? We'll have to keep an eye out for him. This desk is locked with an average lock. Picking it, we lose karma, and we find the NCR Embassy cell key. We don't find much else in here, though we do find a hard-locked door to the southeast. Strangely enough, this one is not set to own, so we can pick it without consequences. Inside, we find a bit of an armory, but everything here is set to own. We find a full suit of NCR trooper armor, a footlocker with flamer fuel, some minor melee weapons, random scrap in the lockers, an opened safe, which is strange. And against the southern wall, we find a number of ammo canisters next to some cattle prods. It's nice to see the cattle prod from Fallout 1 make a cameo appearance here. We find one first aid kit, some police batons, and some 10mm ammunition. And that's about it. Heading out, we can turn around and go through the northeastern door. This leads to a hallway with two bathrooms to the left, neither of which have anything interesting, and the cells to the east. Heading inside and turning around, we find a letter on a table. This is strip letter 10. This is the fourth strip letter we've found so far. Remember in my video on Vault 21, we found three strip letters there. To Private Jackson. This is the last time I take your advice. I went to the bar at Gamora, like you said. I got pissed drunk, got kicked out after getting too friendly with the dancers, fell into the gutter and puked all over myself before being picked up by some MPs. Next thing I know, I'm waking up in the drunk tank two days later. 
Thanks for wasting my past, jerk. Private Daniels. Whoop. Sounds like this fellow suffered from some poor decision making. Turning around, we see the cells. These must be the drunk cells he was talking about. We can use the key that we found in that locked desk to open it. However, when we open it, these guys just stay here. They're gamblers and travelers. Presumably NCR citizens. If the military police was able to lock them away, who got a bit too rowdy on the strip. Well, looks like this MP is getting suspicious. We'll just close that up. No, he came back inside and he's staring at me. Well, looking in the other cell, we don't see anything, so we'll just go ahead and leave for now. Heading outside, we can cross the courtyard. Here we see a drunken soldier. Man, when these NCR troopers go on leave, they really let their inhibitions fly. Heading north, we can enter the NCR embassy, where we arrive at reception. Here we find a woman in a yellow dress sitting at reception named Lisa O'Malley. This is the same Lisa who was mentioned in the terminal we read. When an MP needs to give a report to Admiral Crocker, they hand them directly to Lisa. Welcome to the NCR embassy. How can I help you? I'm looking for the ambassador. Ambassador Crocker can be found in his office through the door to my right and at the end of the hall. What can you tell me about the embassy? The embassy offices are to your left, while the barracks and living quarters are to the right. If you're looking for a history lesson, I suggest you talk to Ambassador Crocker. Okay. No need to get testy, Lisa. Well, hey, tell me about yourself. I don't have time to give my life story to everyone that passes through. Is there something I can actually help you with? Yeesh. Lisa here is a grade-A... egg. Even though Lisa is sitting at her terminal, we can take advantage of a game quirk to hack the thing undetected from behind. At the cost of karma, of course. We find three entries. In the first, Embassy Reports. NCR Embassy Status Report, number 1-50, New Vegas. Increased gang activity in Freeside needs to be monitored. Mr. House doesn't seem to care about anything outside the city's walls. The NCR may have to step in. Ambassador Crocker has once again requested a meeting with Mr. House. A response has yet to be received. Current supplies at the embassy are within normal ranges. Captain Pappas reports no unusual activity on the Strip. In the next one, Captain Pappas's report. Ambassador Crocker, Captain Pappas dropped off a report for you while you were out. The report is attached. Lisa. Security lacking at checkpoints. There have been recent cases of civilians and some troopers sneaking in restricted items into the Strip. Security needs to be increased to make sure that this stops right away. I'm instructing the MPs to tighten security at the checkpoints, and any violations will be severely punished. Recently, confiscated items have been stored in the storeroom at the military police headquarters. I have locked the room and have the key with me. Captain Marie Pappas Oh, so it was Captain Pappas's terminal that we read in the other building. And it was her desk where we found the cell key. The storeroom she mentions here must be the same one that we picked and explored earlier. The final note is Lisa's personal notes. Personal log, Lisa O'Malley. Things have been getting a little busy around here lately. I have a feeling that a lot of things are going on that I'm not aware of. There's a lot more papers and reports getting passed around, but also a lot of things under the table. All I know is that I need a vacation. I'm getting a little tired of spending all my time at the embassy and need to get out. Maybe I'll hit up the casinos one of these nights. Well, I think this can explain why she was in such a bad mood when we met her. She's just tired of her job. From reception, we find two doors. Lisa told us that the Admiral was to the west, so we'll start by exploring to the east. And just in time, out of the eastern door, comes Captain Marie Pappas. I heard you killed Benny over at the tops. I bet you think you're some sort of tough cookie. A piece of advice. If you mess with any of my men, you'll regret it. What can you tell me about the Ambassador? Eh, Crocker isn't too bad. He mostly stays in his office now. If you have any questions about the Embassy, you should ask him. He'll talk your ear off. Good. I love a chatterbox. What all has been happening here on the Strip? Yeah, more the usual. We're keeping an eye on the troopers to make sure they don't do anything stupid. Yeah, the only stupid one we've had lately is Private Irwin. He's starting to cause more trouble than he's worth. Ooh, Private Irwin again. Well, I can't wait to meet this guy. Well, I'd love to learn more about you, Captain. Not much to tell. Keeping the troopers in line and monitoring the strip keeps me busy. It's my job, and I'm going to do it well. Now, if that's all, I've got work to do. All right, all business and no play, I see. Thanks, Captain. Bye. If we try to pickpocket her, sure enough, just as we learned in the terminal, we find a key to the NCR Military Police Headquarters storage room. But we don't need this, seeing as we already picked it. But if we do steal it, we lose karma. 
Behind the reception desk, we find a coffee machine and a few containers, nothing in any of them. So turning around, we'll head through the eastern door. We find a hallway going left on the hallway first. We can open a door, which just leads to a storage room. Here we can find a whole bunch of pre-war books. Uh, if only this was Fallout 3. And a bunch of scrap. Moving out, we find a lot of doors on this hallway. Heading into the left one first, we find a barracks, with the military police doing push-ups on the floor. There are foot lockers next to each of the beds, and lockers against the walls. If we inspect them, we find a little bit of ammunition, but nothing terribly exciting. Moving to the northeast, however, we find strip letter number 11 on a side table. To Private Irwin. If I hear of you pulling another prank on one of my troopers that causes them to return to duty without their clothing fully intact, I will personally make sure you get transferred to Camp Forlorn Hope and don't come back. I'll be watching you. Lieutenant Asheville. Private Irwin, you scallywag. Aside from a few other containers, that's all we find in this barracks. Heading out, we can cross the hall. This just leads to a bathroom. The door just south of this leads to another bathroom, but opening the second door to the east leads to a rather lavish bedroom. Well, lavish as far as the wasteland is concerned. I wonder who sleeps here. Maybe an officer? Maybe Captain Pappas? We find more pre-war books, but that's it. So back at the hallway, we can head south, where we find the mess hall. Here we see NCR soldiers and military police enjoying a meal. And on one of the tables, hey, look at this, we find strip letter number nine to Private Humphreys. This has been the best three-day pass yet. I learned my lesson early and ditched the casinos for the girls at Gamora. Now that is money well spent. You can't get that kind of service at Camp Golf. Gonna sleep now while it's still daylight and head back out to Gamora tonight for one last hurrah. Private Watkins. Well, at least someone's enjoying themselves here. While we're at it, this is as good of an opportunity as any to track down the other strip letters. As I said earlier, we already read three at Vault 21. We just finished reading all of the ones here in the Embassy and the MP headquarters. To find the rest, we head to the Las Vegas Boulevard station. And lying on the ground, next to the Mojave Express drop box, we find strip letter number four. Nicole, all my years of hard work have finally paid off. I hit the jackpot last night over at the tops. I'll have to use a lot of the money to pay off some of the debts I've accrued over the years, but there's plenty left over to live well for the rest of our lives. I told you it would happen. See you soon, Ralph. Well, someone's got to win. It takes winners like Ralph here to keep the allure of Vegas alive. And lying on the ground right next to this one is strip letter number five. Bruce, I think it's time we see other people. We're just not a good fit anymore. Besides, I met this amazing and rich guy at the Ultralux last night. He's a real winner, not a dirty farmhand like yourself. I never want to see you again. Lacey. Ooh, brutal Lacey. Not even a sorry or sincerely yours, but a I never want to see you again? Poor Bruce. Nearby, we find an NCR trooper who tells us a bit about how the NCR is treated by House here on the Strip. I bet it feels real nice to be carrying those weapons around on the Strip. That damn Mr. House has forbid any NCR military personnel from carrying any sort of firearms on the Strip. Well, except for Captain Pappas. Mr. House still doesn't trust the NCR. A word of advice. The Securitrons won't put up with any funny stuff out there, so don't do anything stupid. And if we inspect the reception desk here, we find strip letter number eight. Dear Bravo Company, being transferred to the NCR Embassy on the Strip has been the greatest thing that has happened to me since joining the NCR. It's a pretty easy gig watching the troopers during the day and making sure they don't get into trouble. And then we get to spend our free time hanging out at the bars and clubs, getting drunk and partying. Wish you were here, Private Seamer. Sounds like it's all going according to plan for Mr. House. House lets the NCR here on the strip and then proceeds to consume all of their money. We find the next strip letter inside the Topps Casino if we take the elevator to the 13th floor and then pick the lock to the first room on the left. We find strip letter number six lying on a table inside. Dear Tracy, things have been going well for me here in Vegas. I've had pretty decent luck at the tables lately, and have been able to almost break even. I'm going to hit the roulette tables again tomorrow. I'm going to win big this time, real big. I can feel it. Wish me luck, Mark. Oh, sure, he can feel it. Famous last words. We find the final letter if we head to the Monte Carlo Suites outside of the Strip. 
Then if we turn east and walk until we find a ruined brick building that looks like it's been hit by bombs, we find the corpse of a gambler lying in a corner with a 357 Magnum in his hand. On his corpse, we find strip letter number seven. Those gangsters at the tops cheated me. I know it. They're cheaters and liars and thieves. Their games are all rigged. I've lost every last cap, every NCR bill I had. Those slot machines, you can never win. They're programmed to just make you lose, lose, lose. Their cards are marked so their dealers can cheat you, I promise you this. Invisible ink or something. And their roulette tables? Please, what a joke. The ball must be magnetic. And they can tell it to land wherever they want. The people who do win there are plants, employees. There's no way I could have lost like that unless they were cheating. No way. No way. Those fancy suits can't buy them, class. They're just a bunch of damn con men. They've taken everything from me. I have nothing left. Nothing. What am I going to do? I was supposed to win big here. This is where dreams happen. People told me I could make a fortune here. I just had to have the caps and I could win myself a new future. Now it's all gone. All gone. Rather than face the consequences of his choices and rebuild the tatters of his life, this poor soul chose to commit suicide. I wonder if he's Ralph or Mark or one of the other people whose notes we read talking about how they were about to win big, but whose luck ultimately ran out. We may never know. But these small stories help us better understand exactly what the strip can do to a person. Back at the mess hall inside the embassy, we see a number of military police milling about, but one serviceman sitting at a table. This is none other than Private Jake Irwin, the prankster. Heard you snuffed that Benny guy. Good riddance, guy was a scumbag. Hey, Irwin, good to meet you. Your reputation precedes you. So, what's happening on the strip? Us troopers mostly come to the strip for our R&R. &R. We blow off some steam by gambling, drinking, partying, or fighting. If you're looking for a good time, I'd suggest hitting up Gamora. The girls there are pretty nice, if you know what I mean. Tell me about yourself. What have you heard? I know people think I'm a little on the wild side, but I'm just trying to have fun, you know? Just because I happen to get into fights and like to pull pranks doesn't mean anything. What do you know about the ambassador? He's a little stiff and stuffy. Doesn't leave the office that much, always surrounds himself with papers and reports. I've always wanted to play a prank on him, but there's no way I could ever pull that off without getting in trouble from Captain Pappas. A prank, you say? <laughs> yeah, I got a few ideas that I'm working on. Maybe I'll let you in on it once I have something. I don't know. That doesn't sound like a very good idea. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm not really going to do it. What can you tell me about Captain Pappas? Now, she may be a bit of a hard ass, but she's the best damn captain we've had here. I'd be careful around her. You don't want to get on our bad side. Want to play a game of caravan? Bring it on, buddy. And with that, we can play a game of caravan. One of these days, I'll get my caravan deck together and figure out how this doggone blasted game works. Despite inviting us to partake in one of his capers, we never find an opportunity to. I get the impression that Obsidian had greater plans for the embassy and was likely planning a side quest involving Erwin here, but my bet is that it was sadly cut for time. We find utensils and various sundry goods in the kitchen, some foodstuffs in the refrigerators, and a supply closet to the north with a whole bunch of purified water, alcohol, and foodstuffs. But that's about it for the mess hall, and that's the end of the Eastern Wing. So turning around, we can go back into reception, listen to some praise from Captain Pappas. I wanted to thank you for stopping the Omertus. That could have gone poorly for us if it wasn't for you and then head west to find the ambassador. Heading down the hallway, we find a room to the left. Inside, we see more desks and filing cabinets, and on one desk, we find a holotape, Ambassador Philip Granger's final report. Final report, Ambassador Philip Granger. With my term here coming to a close, I'm taking a moment to reflect on my accomplishments here. Sadly, they are few and far between. The politics between the families and Mr. House have made it incredibly difficult to deal with any of them. The Omertas are a group of sleazy lowlifes pretending to be something they aren't. The White Glove Society gives me the creeps. There's something strange going on with them, and I'm not sure I want to know what it is. The chairmen are thugs that dress themselves up in fancy suits pretending to be cool. I'm surprised that they've lasted this long without killing each other, although it's probably due to Mr. House and his Securitrons. We have our work cut out for us here. I wish my term here was more fruitful than it was, but I'm glad to be returning to the NCR. 
Philip Granger. I can only sympathize with Granger here, knowing that this is all part of House's plan. He actively tries to be as difficult as he can to work with, so that the NCR can't sink their claws any more into Vegas, and so that House can continue to rake in their caps. Heading out and moving down the hallway, we find the Ambassador's door at the end. And sitting at his desk, at the far end of the room, is Ambassador Dennis Crocker. I'm glad you could make it. I have something I wanted to discuss with you. It's a very important matter, and I have a strong feeling you're the perfect person for the job. I'm listening. I'm sure you've noticed that things are a little tense around here with all the issues between the NCR, the Legion, and Mr. House. It doesn't take a genius to see that something big is going to happen soon. To be honest with you, the NCR is in a tight spot. But if we fail now, it's the people here that are going to suffer the most. I'm not willing to let that happen, and I don't think you're the kind of person that would either. You have my attention. Go on. To the northeast is a settlement. The locals here call them boomers. They are sitting on a munition stockpile that would be invaluable to us. I would like you to get in contact with them, and then do whatever it takes to convince them to help us. Unfortunately, the boomers keep to themselves and are, let's say, hostile to all outsiders. That's why I need someone like you. Someone with your background and reputation would have a better chance of reaching them than anyone I have available. In exchange for your help, you would receive complete amnesty for any past crimes against the NCR, as well as additional benefits and perks. Do you think you would be able to do this for me? Actually, I already know them. We are good friends. That's excellent news. So they'll help us, right? Uh, well, I haven't asked them yet. I'll get back to you. Let me know as soon as you have an answer from them. And with that, we start the quest, Things That Go Boom. We'll check in with the boomers in just a bit, but we learned from Captain Pappas that Crocker here likes to chat. We can ask him if he'd like to tell us about himself. Interested in politics, huh? Well, grab a seat and get comfortable. I've been in politics quite a while now. Always had the drive to do it, even when I was young. It's just something I was drawn to. I started my career over 20 years ago, back in the NCR as the local mayor, and worked my way up from there. I managed President Kimball's first run for a seat on the council. I suppose that's why I have this ambassadorship. <laughs> I like how Obsidian gives us a chance to back out here if we want, but I don't want to. Interesting, Dennis. Go on. I was elected to this post seven years ago. I'm the third NCR representative to serve here in Vegas. Now, I've had my share of ups and downs along the way, but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. That's it. Anything else you wish to know? I'd like to know more about the NCR. I can provide a quick history lesson, if that's what you're looking for. In 2274, President Kimball sent the NCR army into the Mojavean force with the objective of occupying and repairing Hoover Dam. Rangers and army scouts had confirmed that the dam was basically unoccupied and could be restored to an operable condition. Upon arriving at the dam, however, they discovered that a large force of tribals and robots had occupied it. This was our introduction to the three families, the Securitrons and, of course, Mr. House. Using his Securitrons as intermediaries, Mr. House called for parlay. He claimed his forces had occupied Hoover Dam in order to safeguard it for our arrival and that he was ready to turn it over to us, so long as we could agree to terms. Those terms became the Treaty of New Vegas. The treaty recognized Mr. House's sovereignty over the Strip and granted us rights to establish military bases at the Dam and McCarran Airport. The NCR is legally permitted to send 95% of the electricity produced by the Dam to our home states. The remaining 5% goes to the Strip. The treaty actually makes it illegal for the NCR to prevent its citizens or troops on furlough from visiting the Strip. Once on the Strip, our citizens are subject to arrest or punishment by House of Securitrons, though that's a rare occurrence. Our troops enjoy a different status. It's illegal for the Securitrons to take action against them. Of course, it's also illegal for our troops to carry firearms on the Strip, so there isn't much trouble they can get into. Our military police does an adequate job of keeping the troops on furlough in line. I don't envy them that task. The embassy was established a few weeks after the treaty was signed. Basically, Mr. House handed us a dumpy little building he had no interest in renovating. I'm the third ambassador to hold this post, and the first, I think, to accept its limitations. My predecessors had ambitions of engineering the annexation of the Mojave. They thought they'd convince Mr. House to join up. I've never even spoken to the man, or whatever he is. Maybe the situation will change once we've beaten the Legion once and for all. Wow. 
This helps explain a lot. It explains why the embassy looks so derelict and why House practically refuses to talk with the ambassador. The NCR plans annexation, but of course, House wants nothing of that. Go on, Dennis. Tell me the rest. Now we mostly just keep track of the NCR citizens and troopers around and make sure they don't get in trouble, but that's Captain Papa's job. I keep myself busy with paperwork and reports that get sent back to the NCR. It's mostly busy work, but every once in a while we make progress. What's happening around the Strip? It's the same old stuff around here. Gambling, debauchery, drunkenness. It's all here. I'm getting a little old for it, however. If you want more information, try talking to some of the other guys around here. I don't get out of the office much anymore. Yes, well, we have read some of their notes. Sounds like a few of the lads get carried away. Well, hey, Crocker, want to play a hand at Caravan? I always have time for a good game of Caravan. I hope you're up to the challenge. <laughs> and even the ambassador is willing to play Caravan. Well, that makes him good in my book, but I don't have time for it now. Taking advantage of the game engine, we can hack the terminal while Crocker's at it. Though we do lose karma, inside we find four entries. The first, informant report. Latest information from our inside source reports that the Omertas are unhappy with House. We may be able to use this as leverage against him. So the NCR has a spy at Gamora. We learned the identity of the spy when we completed the quest The Finger of Suspicion when siding with Caesar's Legion. Little does the NCR know that their spy reports her findings to an NCR soldier who is himself a spy for Caesar. So anything the NCR learns about the Omeritas, the Legion learns. In the next one, Freeside Report, reports are coming in from Freeside detailing a rise in violence against NCR citizens. We're going to need to look into this. All sources indicate that Pacer is involved, of course. We remember Pacer. He is the guy who was taunting Gloria Van Graaff when we did our videos on the Van Graaffs. He's the King's right-hand man. But the King's faith in Pacer may get him into trouble later. In the next one, Farm Report, our farms on the east side of New Vegas are producing a good amount of crops. With the additional water allocated from Hoover Dam, we can increase the number of farms over the next few years by a substantial amount. That means more residents inclined to vote for annexation. Good news for the NCR, but of course this can only be sustained if the NCR gets enough water for the sharecropper farms. We discovered in my videos on Westside that the people of Westside have been stealing that water. And depending on how we chose to resolve that conflict, Either Westside goes without water, or the sharecropper farms don't get enough, in which case the farmers leave. And if that happens, looks like citizens won't be voting for annexation anytime soon. And in the final one, the Fiend Report. The Fiends have been more active outside New Vegas. The NCR troops stationed at Camp McCarran are handling this for now, but the situation needs to be monitored. Thankfully, we already took out Motor Runner at Vault 3, effectively cutting off the head of the Fiends so the NCR doesn't have to worry about them anymore. There is a safe in Ambassador Crocker's office, but it's empty. We find a few personal effects, books, knickknacks, and doodads, and on his bookshelf we find Ambassador Susanna Edith's final report. Loading it up in our Pip-Boy, final report, Ambassador Susan Edith. The past two years serving as the NCR ambassador to the Strip have been trying at best and downright horrid at worst. Living here in New Vegas has been horrible. The accommodations here are barely serviceable, which is a deliberate and malicious act by Mr. House to hinder the NCR's efforts here in New Vegas. On top of that, I am constantly surrounded by drunken idiots who gamble away their money. My work here has been fruitless. I've been unable to get anywhere with Mr. House, or actually meet Mr. House, since all I have dealt with are his Securitrons that only serve to frustrate me further. Still, after all this time, we have been unable to find a common understanding between Mr. House and the NCR's goals for the area. I look forward to returning home to the NCR, and I wish my successor luck. You're going to need it. Susanna Edith And again, we learn that the NCR is playing into House's hands. They're falling for his every trick. It looks as if the NCR isn't going to get anywhere here in Vegas, unless someone intervenes. This sounds like a job for a courier. But first, we have to check in with the Boomers. Now, I already explored the Boomers at the Nellis Air Force Base in a video that you can watch here. And during that video, we completed all of their quests to the point where we became fast friends with the Boomers. 
Now, they'll do anything we ask. We can take advantage of this relationship by heading to the barracks of Mother Pearl, one of the leaders of the Boomers. Hello, friend. How can Mother Pearl be of help today? There may be a battle in the near future at Hoover Dam. Can you offer any assistance? Of course, my child. After all that you have done for us, we would love to help you in the upcoming battle. After all the training and virtual reality, the young ones would relish an opportunity to put their skills to battle. We'll be there when you need us. Thanks, Pearl. Bye. If we successfully get their aid, we can head back to the NCR Embassy to check in with Ambassador Crocker. But he's not at his desk. That's right, it is nighttime. Looks like we have to find him in the barracks. Oh, okay, so this wasn't an officer's room, it was the ambassador's room. It's good to see such an outstanding citizen of the NCR. What can I do for you, my friend? I wanted to talk with you about the Boomers. I hope you've returned with good news. Are they willing to help the NCR? The Boomers have agreed to help me. Excellent work. I can't tell you how useful that would be. In any event, I have another assignment ready and waiting for you. But we can speak of it later. Rest up, and when you're ready, speak to me again. Alternatively, if instead we killed Pearl, we fail this part of the quest. And if we check in with Ambassador Crocker after having failed, we have to say, I don't think it's going to work out with the Boomers. Sorry. That's disappointing. They could have been a big help to us. I guess we'll just have to do without. Either way, we move on to the next task. When we're ready to proceed, we can check in with Crocker. Hey, Ambassador, earlier you mentioned another assignment. So I did. As you may have noticed, our position here in New Vegas is tenuous. We've made great strides, sure, but the NCR is not welcome here, merely tolerated. And even then, not by everyone. We've had reports of violence against NCR citizens in a neighborhood just to the northeast called Freeside. Ever been there? We have a number of options. We can say, I have been there. It's a slum. I'm inclined to agree, but it's a slum with NCR citizens in it. And as such, it falls under my jurisdiction. Or we can lie and say, no, never been there. In which case we lose karma. It's a beastly place. Poverty is rampant and all that goes with it. Drugs, alcohol abuse, the usual. Or we can say, maybe, upwards inflection? I go lots of places. Can't remember them all, you know. You'd remember this one. It's a pit where people are robbed, murdered, or simply go to die. Or we can be honest and say, yeah, I've been there. What of it? Violence is something of a way of life there, but there's been a disturbing rise in the number of attacks on our people lately. More worrying is the fact that our sources suggest the violence is being perpetrated by the gang that runs the place, the Kings. I need someone to look into this that won't attract attention. Would you be interested? Sure, I'll look into it. Good. Our men have come up with two different plans for seeing an end to the violence. First, our sources have tracked most of the attacks back to a King named Pacer. The consensus is that the violence will stop if he's removed. The problem is we can't simply kill him. In the current climate, the NCR would likely be blamed for his death. There is an alternative option, but my sources feel that getting rid of this Pacer fellow is our best shot. What? You want me to assassinate him? I'm not an assassin, Dennis. In that case, we could take a different tact, but one that I at least have more experience with, diplomacy. If we can't go after the man responsible, we'll simply appeal to the man above him. If I can't just kill him, what exactly did you want me to do? Make it look like an accident, or pin the deed on someone else. Look into this guy's affairs and I'm sure you'll find something you can use. You know, I know the Kings pretty well and I've heard that there's bad blood between Pacer and the Van Graaff family. See? That's exactly the type of information we can use. In fact, that's perfect. Those fancy weapons the Van Graaffs pedal aren't exactly common. It goes without saying that actually getting the Van Graaffs to do the deed would be the ideal solution. However, if Pacer were killed with either a laser or a plasma-based weapon, everyone would automatically assume the Van Graaffs did it. Still, unless you want several dozen armed men at your throat, you'd have to kill them without being seen. Be careful. I'll leave the method up to you. However, there is an alternative if you'd rather try to handle things without bloodshed. I've also heard that Pacer is addicted to Jet, even though he has a heart condition. That could be useful, but I'm afraid I don't have the background and know how to take advantage of that knowledge. If we have the Wild Wasteland trait, we find an option here to say, I was hoping you'd know. Damn it, I'm an ambassador, not a doctor. You'll have to find some other way. (laughs) I believe that was a Star Trek reference. Good old bones. Or we can pass a medicine check of 50 to say, add a little psycho to his jet, 
and he'd have a heart attack. Remind me never to get on your bad side. If that's true, then yes, that would be a suitable way to get rid of him. However, it would involve gaining access to his personal drug stash and tampering with it unseen, which might pose a challenge. Or, assuming we don't want to do the whole assassination thing, we can say, what's my other choice? I'm not a violent man myself, so I had our guys come up with an alternate solution on the off chance that our agent-to-be shared my sentiments. If we can't go after the man responsible, we'll simply appeal to the man above him. The Kings, including our friend Pacer, report to the leader of their gang, a man who calls himself the King. Tell me more about the King. He's Caucasian, in his mid-thirties, and extremely charismatic. It's that last part we're counting on. The Kings are a bunch of young hoodlums who aren't inclined to listen to anyone except him. Get him on your side, and the rest will fall in line. What would I need to do? Go and talk to the King. Try to convince him to put an end to this violence. Pacer's a punk, but he won't likely disobey a direct order. The King might not be open to the idea at first, so you may have to integrate yourself with him. Do whatever it takes. When it's done, one way or the other, report back here, and we'll take it from there. I think I'd rather go with the assassination plan. If that's what you prefer, I won't stop you. Just remember to try to find a way to do it that doesn't lead back to the NCR. If it just doesn't look possible to make the kill without drawing attention, don't forget there's always the diplomatic approach. Or we can say, guess I'll have to go talk with the king then. I wish you luck. If you run into some difficulty and think you'd rather just take the shot with Pacer, that's fine too. All right, I'll try to find a way. I'm sure something will turn up. If you think you found something but are unsure, report back and I'll let you know if it's something we can use. It may be tough to find a way to completely throw off suspicion, however. And with that, we start the quest, King's Gambit. Now, many of the dialogue options we explored here only open up after we learn certain things about Pacer while doing quests for the Kings in Freeside. In our next video, we'll confront the Kings and explore all the different ways we can end the violence against NCR citizens in Freeside. But if you haven't already, I encourage you to watch my video on the Kings that you can watch here. In that video, we go through all of the choices we can make that lead up to this ultimate conflict with the NCR. So I encourage you to check it out. But for now, we're out of time. We'll have to follow up with the Kings in our next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. They also come on other products as well, such as smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, where you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the next episode of the full story of Fallout New Vegas.